Producing a song that sounds good starts with recording good sounding audio. Let's discuss how gain structure and recording levels affect audio quality. As the signal passes through a recording system, there are multiple places to adjust the signal level. The general rule is to raise the signal to the desired level at the beginning of the signal path and maintain that level to output. The first place in the signal path that the level can be adjusted is at the preamp on the audio interface. The preamp is necessary because the output level on most microphones is generally low. Use the preamp gain knob to adjust the level as necessary. While setting levels in preparation for recording, it's best to keep your headphone or speaker monitor levels at a moderate or reasonable level. This will protect your ears and speakers in case there is a sudden increase in the volume level. The monitor level is typically controlled from the monitor output control on the audio interface. When setting monitor levels, it's a good idea to use a sound pressure meter. Listening levels should average in the 80 to 85 decibel range, and anything higher than that will cause ear fatigue and eventually ear damage. To start, turn the preamp up until the signal is averaging around minus 6 dB on the level meter in live. This should leave enough headroom for the peaks in the signal to stay below 0 dB. If you still encounter peaks in the signal above 0 dB, lower the average level until those peaks are just below 0 dB. Following these guidelines should result in recordings that feature a good signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, so I'm going to put the track into input monitoring so I can check those levels real quick. And as I test those, you can see that I'm approaching the level that I need to be at. Let me just bump that just a little bit. Okay, and I'm right there around minus 6 dB. I'll put this back into auto monitoring, and I'm going to record enable the track. To start recording, all I need to do is click one of the record buttons in an available clip slot on that track. Let me do that. Now as I talk here, you can see signal on the meter. I'm averaging around minus 6 dB, and down in the hot spot here, I can see the audio waveform drawing. If I click on that, you can see the waveform in the overview area. To stop recording, click the stop button on the track or press the space bar. So to synchronize the recording to the groove, you may want to enable the metronome, which we heard as I played. You can do that by clicking on the metronome button. And you may also want to set a count in. This one was set at one bar. Before, during, and after recording, you want to be able to monitor the input signal. Live allows three monitoring options. Let me disable the record button here. First of all, and I'll bring up the I.O. so that we can see that. So live allows three monitor options. Auto, when a track is record enabled, the track input is monitored. When not record enabled, live automatically switches to monitoring clips that are playing via the track. Input monitoring, the track input is monitored regardless of the track recording status. This is useful when you want to practice with the part while the rest of the set plays back. The in button and track activator button turn orange when the track is set to in. And last, off switches off monitoring a track through live. This is useful when using an audio interface that allows you to monitor record enabled tracks at the input to the interface. So after you've finished recording, you should evaluate the recording. What is the difference in signal between the sound source and any noise? That could include computer drives or fans. Is the signal loud enough that it masks any noise present? Are there any pops or distortion from plosive consonants, Bs, Ds, and Ps? If there are, re-record using a pop filter if one is available. If not, try turning the microphone 45 degrees off axis and talk across the microphone's diaphragm. Is the sound clear and undistorted? If not, try backing off the microphone a few inches. How is the tone quality of the recording? Is it warm and full, muddy or brittle? If you don't like the tone quality, Try turning the microphone off axis or try using a different microphone. If both dynamic and condenser microphones are available, make several recordings and compare the differences. Recording audio into a program like Ableton Live can yield great results if you are aware of how gain structure and audio levels can affect audio quality. Now that you understand these issues, you're ready to make great sounding recordings.